Hello and welcome back to Lido. In today's video, it's all about Nginx. I'm going to show you the overall configuration layout and give you an overview of how it's set up and configured. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. For the purposes of this tutorial, I went ahead and set up a brand new Linode running Ubuntu 20.04 that I cleverly named Nginx Tutorial, as you see here. So what I'm going to do is grab the IP address, I'll copy it to the clipboard, and then I'll go to my terminal, and via SSH I will connect to the Linode. And now I am connected to my Linode via SSH. I have zero updates that can be installed. That's just something to keep in mind. You should always make sure that your Linode has all the latest patches, and mine does. And we should be good to go to get started. So what I'm going to do is give you an overview of the configuration for Nginx. So obviously you will need to have Nginx installed already. So what I've done off camera is I went ahead and set up the official Nginx repository, and then I installed the Nginx package. So now we should be good to go. So in order for Nginx to give us any benefit whatsoever, we have to make sure that it's actually running. And for that, we could run systemctl status Nginx, just like that. And in my case, it is running, as you can see right here. And since our Linode is accessible from the public internet, we can go back to our browser, open up a new tab. We could paste in the IP address right here for our Linode and press enter. And as you can see here, we have the default Nginx welcome page. So we can see that it's working, but how exactly does it even work to begin with? Well, what I'll do is switch back over here to the terminal, and then I'll show you the configuration. Now first and foremost, if we go into the slash Etsy Nginx directory, then list the storage, so you can see that even an unconfigured Nginx has a variety of configuration files installed by default. I haven't actually configured Nginx at all, so what you're seeing here is the default installation. Now the first file that we are going to take a look at is the nginx.conf file. So what I'll do is open that up in an editor. Now the first thing to know about nginx is that there's several contexts by default. And the first four items, we have user, worker processes, error log, and the PID, also referred to as the PID. These four items here are part of the main context. They're not part of any specific server block. These are config lines that are actually for Nginx itself. So here we see the user is Nginx. So if I background this editor right here and show the contents of Etsy password, we can see there at the bottom the Nginx user. So when I installed Nginx, it created a user for itself as well. And then if I run ps aux and then I grep for nginx, we can see here that nginx, the master process, is running as the nginx user. Now the text has wrapped off the edge a little bit because I have increased the font size. But as you can see here, nginx is running as the nginx user. Back to the config file. We understand now that the user that nginx runs as is the user also named nginx. And then here we have worker processes. It's currently set to one. And as you might be able to guess, this determines how many worker processes for Nginx will be running in the background. Now a full description of how this works is beyond the scope of this tutorial. But essentially, the more worker processes you have, the better performance you will get. However, if you set it to too many, then you can actually suffer negative impacts like slower performance. So this is something that you have to tweak to make sure that you have everything set up properly. The Nginx documentation recommends that you set this number to the number of cores that we have available. So if I background this yet again, and cap the contents of slash proc slash CPU info, and then scroll up a little bit here, we only have one core. We have processor zero, we see it on this line right here. And if I scroll down, we don't have another processor, so we have a single core. Now you can also go to the Linode dashboard and take a look at the plan that you have assigned your Linode to see how many CPUs you have. 
But again, according to the EdgeNX documentation, they recommend that you set the worker processes to the number of CPUs that you have on your server. For the error log, you're basically choosing where the log file for EdgeNX will be if you need to take a look at it and see if there's any errors. So the first part, we're setting the path to slash var slash log slash nginx slash error dot log. And then we are setting the log level to warn. So if I take a look at that, you can see that we have an access log and an error log as well. The error log is currently zero bytes. There's no errors right now. And then we also have the access log, which is going to show output when our server is accessed. So for example, if I just go ahead and tail that log file, I'll center a few times here, go back up to the browser, I'll refresh it, I'll do it again, and why not just do it over and over again? And back here at the terminal, you can see that it did in fact update the access log every time I hit the refresh button. So anyway, back to the configuration file. Now the PID is just going to show where the PID file for Nginx will be located. There really shouldn't be any reason to change this, so I'll go ahead and leave that alone. Now here we have the number of connections that are allowed per worker. It's currently set to 1024. This is the total number of connections that a worker may be able to have. So you want to take that into consideration if you are going to be serving a website that potentially will have a ton of visitors. There's no magic here. Basically you want to go ahead and customize this as you see fit according to the use case and popularity of your server. Now I'm going to scroll down a bit here. And we have this HTTP block right here, which is going to be probably where you'll spend the majority of time customizing your configuration. Now a full walkthrough of the configuration here is beyond the scope of this video. But essentially when you are configuring the web server itself and how it's accessed, then this is the block where you will add that configuration. We also see the access log identified right here. And if you want to go ahead and change that to a different name, for example, you may do that. You can set things like the keep alive timeout. And down here, we actually have an include statement that is including everything in slash Etsy slash nginx slash conf.d that ends in a .conf file name. So if we take a look at that, we have the actual directory that it's referring to right here. And then inside there, we have a default configuration file. So let's take a quick look at that one too. So when you are dealing with virtual hosts, which essentially means that you have more than one website running on your server, then you may have more than one configuration file. Now this default configuration file is, well, a default configuration file. So this is actually what is serving the welcome page that we saw earlier. So back here, this welcome page right here where it says welcome to Nginx. We can see where that's actually located. So if I grab this here, and paste it back into the terminal, and then go ahead and type out the full path, we can see the actual HTML page that is being served whenever we go and access our Linode by the IP when Nginx is installed, and we haven't yet customized the configuration. So we see the title, Welcome to Nginx. And then we have a paragraph tag right here, which has the verbiage that we see right here. So back here on the default config file, we were looking at this location block right here, which is setting the root path to this directory and that the index file is going to be either named index.html or index.htm. And then here we have an error page setting that we are looking for errors of 500, 502, 503, or 504. And if one of those errors does come up, then we are actually going to send them back to user share nginx html. Now this whole thing right here is known as a server block. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the directives and syntax here might change a little bit depending on how you've installed nginx. Now again, I've installed Nginx from the official Nginx repositories, but if you went ahead and installed the package from the Ubuntu repositories, 
then you'll also have a Sites Available and Sites Enabled directory that can contain config files as well. But anyway, this is a server block. And basically what this is doing for us is it's allowing us to configure the Nginx server itself. We could choose the port that it listens on, and by default, of course, that's port 80. We have the server name right here, and this is actually pretty important because if you have an actual domain name attached to your Linode, then you should put that domain name here in place of localhost. And the way that would look, I'll go ahead and back this out, is if we had a domain, maybe something like www.example.com, we would put it there. But what if somebody types example.com without the three W's at the beginning? We should also look for example.com as well without the www. So we could go ahead and serve traffic that is looking for just the example.com without the www and serve traffic for that as well. Now I've already gone over the location block right here. And then here we have the error page config, which is just basically going to help us configure what happens if we have an error while something is attempting to be accessed. If I scroll down a bit, we have quite a few comments, so I'll just go past all those. And then we have the closing brace right here. Now back up here, this server name field right here is basically allowing us to do name-based virtual hosting. Now the situation might be that you may have more than one website running on your Linode. And if you do, then you'll want to have a different config file for each website. So if I was to go ahead and set up a second one, then I would maybe make a copy of this file right here. I would change the path for the root so that it would be serving a different index file. And then I would set the server name to something else. So again, right here, we have the location block. And this location block is set to a single forward slash. What that means is that essentially, if anything is being accessed at example.com, or www.example.com, basically no subpath at the end, then this path and one of these files is going to be served to the user. And we can have more than one of these. So for example, I can go down here and type another one. And this is just hypothetical. I don't actually have a blog installed on this Linode. So what I've done is I've added a second hypothetical location block. So that way, if somebody accesses the domain slash blog, then they will be shared files from this blog directory here, if I did create it, and then one of these two files. Now, if you wanted to create a completely separate website, then you basically want to grab this default.conf file right here, just copy it to a new name, change the paths, and have it be its own file. Now it's important to understand that this is case sensitive by default. So for example, if somebody typed slash blog at the end of the domain name with a capital B, this would not match and this content would not be served. Now there are ways that you can set up Nginx to be case insensitive. And if you're interested in seeing how that works, then definitely check out the wiki page that matches this video for some examples. For another example of how that works, I go into the user share nginx html directory. Look at the contents here. We again have the index.html file. And if you recall, it's this page right here. So essentially, the way that this works, if you take the domain, maybe something like example.com, and then you access index.html, then what it's actually serving is the full path, so user, share, nginx, the path that we're in right now, html slash index.html. So essentially, this URL maps to this path on the file system of the Linode. Now, you don't actually have to include the index.html, so I could take that off, because in the configuration file, it's looking for that file name by default, so that's why we are able to type simply www.example.com. And then what the user sees is this file right here that is located in the user share nginx html directory. And again, this is that line right here that is telling nginx to look for files with those names if somebody is attempting to access the root domain. 
and the single forward slash represents the root of the domain. Now what I'm going to do is close out of this file right here. I'm not going to save any of the changes that I've made. And we can go ahead and take a look at some examples of how to restart Nginx. So for example, if we do make changes to the config file for Nginx, then we can restart Nginx with systemctl, restart Nginx, just like that. And then if we check the status, we want to make sure that if we do make changes to the configs, that Nginx is actually running and didn't error out. So what we want to see is active and running like we see here. We can also see that it's running as of eight seconds ago, so it did successfully restart. Now the problem though is that if you restart Nginx, you could be dropping connections and that can make your users, well, fairly annoyed. One thing you could also do is reload Nginx. So for that, we could do systemctl reload Nginx, just like that. And then if we go ahead and check the status again, we can see that it's been running as of 43 seconds ago. So it didn't restart the entire process, but it did reload the config. And we can see that right here, reloading Nginx. So it was able to reload the config file without actually restarting the entire service. And then of course, if you would like to stop Nginx, that's simply systemctl stop and then Nginx just like that. And then if we check the status, we see that it's not running, it's inactive as we see right here. And then if we refresh our website here, it's unable to connect, so Nginx is stopped. And then of course, if it's not already running, you can go ahead and start it back up. And now we're able to access the default web page once again. So there you go. I hope that was helpful. And as always, make sure you click on that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. We have more content coming. And if you need more information on Nginx, make sure you check out the documentation article that accompanies this video for even more information that you will definitely find helpful. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again.